small and modular reactors are the in thing in global nuclear industry india is also making small and modular reactors called bharat small modular reactors i have with me dr alexander volgin he is director of projects for south asia for the russian nuclear agency rosatom thanks a lot for speaking to me a very frequent visitor to india very familiar with the russian india cooperation and today we'll be talking to him about the russian small modular reactors and the global small modular reactor program what are small modular reactors first of all good morning it's a um, pleasure to see you here and uh, make this presentation and as well a presentation of smrs uh, to indian public and indian friends yes. um so first of all when we speak about smrs we're speaking about small modular reactors small it means they take less place than conventional npps modular means which is so, nuclear power plants yeah sure 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 npps um so as you can see this is a bright example of smr so several countries have some developments uh but russia is uh the first country i would say to deploy them specifically when we speak about uh, floating units and now we are speaking about the land based uh, small modular reactor so small it means they take less place modular it means first of all they are factory assembled as you can see this is a uh, one piece that can be transported to the construction site oh, so, so the reactor unit is single piece Yes, it's single piece. So uh, it embeds uh, pumps, it embeds steam generators. So steam generator no nozzles are here. Uh, so reactor uh, embeds inside uh, nuclear fuel. And so this is a steam producing unit. So steam is forward then on the turbine islands. Oh, this is the this turbine. Is yes, this is a turbine. And uh, which will provide the electricity in the final. So this is the whole area with some auxiliary building, administrative building, uh, which allows this NPP to function in the right way. Now, how much area would a small modular reactor take? We are familiar with the Kudunkulam nuclear plant. It takes a huge amount of area. Yes. So how much would a small modular reactor of Russian origin take? So typically we are speaking about 15 to 17 hectares, but it can be adapted uh, as a function of uh, local requirements. So the water supply, uh, the region when it will be and where it will be constructed, et cetera. So numerous parameters will influence the uh, uh, footprint of the NPP. Now, what, what is the, how many megawatts of electricity can the Russian SMR Deliver. So for that example, we are typically speaking about 55 megawatt electrical. So electrical part is uh, provided by the turbine island. Uh, the reactor itself, it's a thermal energy, so it goes up to 200 megawatt thermal. And, and what is the enrichment level of uranium in, a, in the Russian SMR? It's Haleo fuel. It means it goes up to uh, 20%. It's more enriched than a conventional fuel for pressurized water reactors, but it's uh, not a highly enriched fuel. Now, I heard you mention that you are still constructing one uh, Russian SMR. So, yes, uh, we have a project which is ongoing in Yakutia region. And as well, we have signed a contract for it. First, in a road expert contract for Uzbekistan, where we will supply six units. Same design. Same design. Yes. And Same Uzbek design. Written, ordered it. Written to Congress and we have signed a contract last year. Uh, what is the global scenario of uh, small modular reactors? Do the, do the Americans have a small modular reactor which is functional? It's a hype now. I would say it's a quite popular, uh, I would say, direction in the nuclear field. Um, most of the countries in the world are developing their own SMR. So we have United States, we have France, with a lot of <clears throat> startups in this field. We have China, and for sure Russia is a pioneer in this field. You know that um, our SMRs are not something new. Uh, we have used small reactors on the icebreakers uh, since 50s. So uh, written 200 is an evolution of these reactors. So it has been used and still is in use on the icebreakers. And so we have decided to take the same reactor and make of it a land-based NPP equipped with SMR. 
I presume having a floating nuclear reactor on an icebreaker would probably be more complex than having a land-based reactor. Is that fair? Uh, not at all, because this technology allows uh, this reactor to be, I would say, uh, very compact. We can place it wherever we want. So on the barge, so we have floating power units. Uh, you have it uh, in this pavilion, so you can, you can yeah, you, you can check it. And as, as well on uh, on land. So uh, typically, the size of the NPP is guided by the regulations. So they are a little bit different for the maritime code and for the land-based NPPs. So that's why typically we have a big building uh, inland and we have a small um, power supplying unit on the seaside. What is the advantage of a small modular reactor? Typically flexibility. Um, once again, this reactor is really small. You can transport it itself uh, by train by railroads, and you can um, achieve a small construction time because it's uh, already a factory, I would say, assembled as this uh, steam supplying unit. It can easily be uh, <clears throat> placed everywhere. So uh, in the remote areas, on archipelagos, together with the floating units as well. Um, another advantage is that not all the grids can allow Big reactor. To have reactors. Yes. Of you need big a big grid. Yes, big grid. So typically, uh, when we speak about India, some remote areas on the northern part can provide can be provided by a sustainable and green energy. Sure, and also the islands probably under Nicobar and yes, for sure. Islands, for sure. where you have uh, remote areas yes. where you don't have electricity and you're generating by diesel. Yes, you could replace yes. that. Are these green? Sure, nuclear energy is green. It's sustainable. Um, when we speak about um, these reactors, they can supply energy for five, six years without reloading. So it's interesting as well. Is it correct that China has a functional uh, yes, small modular Yes, commissioned uh, land-based SMR recently. So we... Uh, Where is it and what is the, the how many megawatts, etc. does it generate? It's about 100 megawatt electrical. And, and so it's a test sample. I don't know whether they will be interested in the deployment of a huge amount of SMRs because their aim is to provide a great amount of energy with large scale units. Uh, they have a huge program and uh, they have more than 30 units, I guess, under construction. They have 40 units under construction 40, already 40, yeah, at, so. at the current time. That's yes. what the Chinese told me. And, and after that, see, India also wants to have 100 gigawatts of electricity through nuclear. That is the nuclear yes. mission by announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Finance Minister. Does that excite you? Yes, it was a great news because we have already a good background of cooperation with India. We are constructing Kudankulam together with uh, our Indian partners. And so we are ready to provide more energy, more reactors, um, large scale, small scale, floating units, even advanced reactors. Now, when the head of Rosatom met Dr. Mohanty in Vienna, yes. and in the statement it said that there would be cooperation on small modular reactors. Are you looking at co-development or are you looking at just technology to be supplied? Uh, we are looking at all the ways of cooperation. Some of our technologies and reactors can be co-developed. Some of them can be supplied as a ready product, because if you want to achieve 100 gigawatts, you need to act now. Yeah, absolutely. But, but see, there's a difference. The Kudunkulam nuclear plant is supplied by Russia. Some of the parts are localized. Yes. And in the statement from Vienna, they spoke about localization. And, yes, and, for sure. And, and the cost would certainly come down if you start looking at local industries in India. So are you are you looking at localization for small sure, modular? Sure, we are developing our supplier chain in India. So we are discussing with the local partners. And so we are uh, in tight discussions with the government and Department of Atomic Energy on the deployments of localization and SMRs in India. And what about, are you likely to collaborate on the Bharat small modular reactor which India is developing? If the Department of Atomic Energy and BRC invite us, for sure we will be pleased to cooperate on this. Now, now some people tell me 
that see, India has a fleet of 220 megawatt pressurized heavy water reactors. Yes. You are very familiar with that. Yes, yes. That's already an SMR. Why do we need to have more SMR? Uh, first of all, you need to diversify. And there are some specificities for each technology. Yes. So uh, pressurized water reactors are efficient in the use of the fuel. And specifically, when you are looking at uh, longer periods of electricity supply, you will go for it in 200 reactor, which will supply energy for six years approximately. So, so you would suggest India look at Reton 200 as a uh, Reton 200 as a, a reactor of choice. It's one of the ways of cooperating because India is huge. It's in development. Industries need green energy. So I guess there will be a place for all the reactors. I mean, are a small reactor, SMRs, large scale units, depending upon the final aim to achieve. Now, India is also looking to partner with private industry. And you know, the joint venture between uh, Nuclear Park Corporation of India Limited and NTPC just took off with four reactors being foundation being laid by India. Would you be looking, if possible, at a joint venture with an Indian private company for Bharat small modular reactors or for the Russian small modular reactors? We will study all the possibilities. And uh, for sure, it was a great news uh, about the amendment of fact to allow private players um, to run in this journey. Um, for us, it was really exciting because we feel this power, we, we feel uh, their wish um, to produce green energy. And so I guess it will be a good thing for India and for Russia as well. India and Russia have been great friends in the nuclear sector. We had Kudunkulam, we had INS Arihant, where there were consultancy and hopefully with small modular reactors. As well. It's the next step of our cooperation. Excited about India being going 100 gigawatts on nuclear? Very excited. It's really interesting for us. And as uh, long term friends of India, we're ready to provide everything and all and, our assistance. And is this an integrated reactor which, that the turbine unit, the, the nuclear island, they come together? Um, it's an integrated reactor in itself, I would say, because the steam generators and the pumps are integrated in the reactor. So uh, there are almost no piping. You can see that uh, the pumps are outside to facilitate the maintenance. <clears throat> the steam generators are embedded within the reactor pressure vessel. Uh, so the turbine island is separated from it. So there are no uh, designs at my knowledge that integrates everything, including the turbine part. So uh, typically when we speak about um, <coughs> integrated design, it's much more related to the reactor itself than for the station. Are small modular reactors safe? For sure. They combine passive and active systems. They are uh, used already on the icebreakers. We have more than 400 reactor years of operation because nowadays we have four reactors equipped with, uh, sorry, four floating unit, uh, icebreakers equipped with eight reactors under operation. Uh, we had a huge history with KLT uh, type reactors and OCA type reactors, so the previous generations. So uh, they have proven their safety. Have you had any accidents on these? No, not at all. Accident tolerant, safe by design. So if India collaborates and goes small modular reactor, can Indians be assured that we will have as much safety as the Russian reactors have had? Yes, for sure. Because this is the most advanced safety concept that we have. And is this the future for the world for small modern, small reactors? Maybe, uh, because the cost of reactors uh, of SMRs uh, is typically higher than of the large scale NPVs. You need to understand that you will construct the same almost amount of concrete. You will uh, <clears throat> take the big uh, places uh, so uh, everything takes money. I would say the capital, overall capital cost uh, is smaller for SMRs than for the large scale units, but um, the electricity will be a little bit higher in the price. All right. So look forward to a possible India-Russia collaboration so in small modular reactors. The Kudunkulam facility has done 
quite well in generating electricity for Tamil Nadu and that region. Yes. And there are two plus two plus two, six units coming in Kudankulam yes. and another site in the off, in the off, offing. Thanks a lot sure. for speaking Thank to me. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you so much. What it's a pleasure. A so that was Dr. Alexander Volgan telling us all about small modular reactors. These are integrated units for the nuclear island. While Russia is developing the land-based small modular reactors, India is also developing its Bharat small modular reactor. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi wants India to ramp up its nuclear energy to 100 gigawatts and achieve net zero by 2070. For providing low carbon base load of energy, nuclear energy or atomic energy offers a solid solution. This is a model of the Russian small modular reactor. Someday we will also take you to the floating reactor and also to the Russian small modular reactor. Which camera person, Gauri Prasad, in Moscow, Russia, Palav, Bagla, or NDTV. <laughs>